Tony Brew Ministries presents the following sermon from John chapter 9, entitled, Pharisaical Blindness. This subject today is Pharisaical Blindness. It has to do with the Pharisees and blindness. I was thinking about some cookies. I don't know if y'all like cookies or not. Now, you may not like a lot of cookies that's out nowadays, but I'm talking about this big sleeve, this big tube of cookies that's tied up on the end like a big sausage roll. And Miss Peggy cooked some cookies a while back, and she got to saying, well, what happened to all them cookies? And I said, kill Roy's been here. (laughs) She said, no, darling, kill Roy lives here. They come along with this thing now about taking all the good stuff out of the good stuff. These finks and people who don't know what sex they are and environmentalists and worship trees and all that, they come along and they mess up our french fries, they mess up our sugar cookies, they mess up everything. We need to just quit paying attention to them and go back and eat some good old home cornbread. That'd make more sense to me. Though it's not considered a courtesy to do so, with the Lord's permission and the indulgence of His people, we will plop right into the middle of this story. John chapter 9, verse 24. At this point, the man who was born blind is already healed by Jesus and has already been interrogated about it several times. The term they refers to the Pharisees. This is a self-righteous religious crowd. They're still alive. I would say well, but they're not too well. They think they are. They are responsible for crucifying Christ and even now are guilty of leading much of the church world into darkness and liberalism and ultimately hell. It's the religious crowd. I didn't say the saved crowd. I didn't say the holy crowd. I said the religious crowd that is responsible for crucifying our Lord. They were the ones who said, crucify him. These are the ones who are responsible for leading much of the church world into darkness, liberalism, and ultimately hell. And that's why we call it pharisaical blindness. They refuse to see Jesus for who he is. Verses 24 to 29. Then again called they the blind man, the man that was blind, and said unto him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. Now, right off the bat, they made a judgment against Christ. They said, give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. Well, the fact is, you don't know who's a sinner. We go around saying, he's lost, pray for her, she's lost. And we gracefully accept our speech and we give each other grace room for speech. But actually, when it comes down to brass tacks, when it comes down to boiling down to it, we don't know who's saved. We don't know who's lost. This man is a sinner. They put themselves in a judgment place against Christ, who is the only one who has the power to judge anybody anyway. This man is a sinner. He answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. I don't know about all your religiosity. I don't know about all your theology. I don't know about all your arguments. I don't know about the conviction of the Spirit who's convicting your own heart. And that's why you can't accept Christ for who He is. I don't know whether he's a sinner or not. I don't know. All I know is I was blind and now I see. And that's what I say. I say today that I don't know who did what. I don't know who said what. I don't know he said, she said, they did. I don't know all that. All I know is when I was a little boy, I was a little sinner boy. And when I got up to be a teenager, I was a sinner teenager. And early in my teen years, God got a hold of my life and He changed me and He saved me and He called me into gospel ministry. That's all I know. I don't know who said what, who did what. All I know is He started me on my way and I intend to make it home. Anybody got a problem with that, need to check in with the boss man. 
Because all I know is what he's done for me. I don't know who's right. I don't know who's wrong. I don't know who's in. I don't know who's out. I don't know who did this. I don't know who did that. I don't know who's got the best program. I don't know who's got the best youth. I don't know. I don't care about all that. I mean, I care, but I don't care. All I know is what he did for me. And that supersedes anything that is coming along to try to discourage me and pull me down. Because as a blind man, the ex-blind man, we don't like to use that ex, but the man who was blind, he said, all I know is what he did for me. Then said they uh, to him again, what did he to thee? How open he thine eyes? They're questioning him about it again. He answered them, I have told you already, and you do not hear. Wherefore would you hear it again? Will you also be his disciples? Here's a man that was blind and healed said, Oh, time out. I know what it is. The deal is, maybe there's something in your heart that's searching. Maybe you really secretly want to be his disciple too. Maybe you realize that your religion is not satisfying you. That's what he was saying. Look, maybe you are interested in being his disciple too. I've told you what happened to me. I've told you that he put clay on my eyes. He told me to go wash, and I washed, and glory be, now I see. That's what happened to me. That's what he did for me. That's all I know. Maybe you're interested in being his disciple too. Maybe there's something convicting your heart. Then they reviled him and said, Thou art his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. We know that God spake unto Moses, but as for this fellow, and you know this is language again, as for this fellow, we know not from whence he is. We don't even know where he's from. We don't know where he came from. Well, they've already judged him as a sinner. Now they judge him as a no count. He come from the wrong side of the tracks. We don't know where he's from. We know that God spoke through Moses, but as for this guy, we don't know where he's from. You better be careful by calling the king of kings a fellow or a guy. Yes, he was a man, and he's all man and all God, but he's God Almighty. That's who he is. They refuse to see Christ for who he is. Jesus is not asking you to receive him for someone who he's not. He's asking you to receive him for who he is. They refuse to see Christ for who he is, and they refuse to see or hear the cause of the common people. This is what I call pharisaical blindness. They were not physically blind like the blind man was, but they are worse shaped than the blind man was. They had spiritual blindness. His blindness once upon a time covered his eyes. Their blindness covered their heart. They were in a whole lot worse shape than the blind man was. The blind man had atonement for his healing, which could result in him being sighted, and thus he was. He received his sight. These people could have been saved, but they did have not have any remedy for their situation because they refused to accept Christ for who he is. They refused to see Christ for who he is, and they refused to hear the cause of the common people. There are many ministers in America and across the nations of the world. The people, they know the people are right. They know the people have a heart for God. They know the people have a heart after holiness. But they won't want to hear what the people's got to say. Because if you listen to the people, you scoop down a little bit. You've got to stoop down to their level. Well, no, you don't have to stoop down to our level. God put us all on the same level. The ground is level at the foot of the cross. Verses 30 to 34, the man answered and said unto them, Why, herein is a marvelous thing, that ye know not from whence he is, and yet he hath opened mine eyes. This is amazing to me. You don't know from where he is. You can't identify with him. And yet he had the power from God to open my eyes. Herein is a marvelous thing. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. And this is the man who was previously blind, continuing to talk. By the way, he taught a better lesson than many ordained and divinity degreed preachers preach every Sunday. Because he was speaking from his heart. And they're speaking from www.somewheresermon.com. <laughs> www.somebodyelsesermon.com. 
You know, there's some good chewing gum in this world if you still got teeth enough to chew it. <laughs> Spearmint, dentamint, dentine, juicy fruit. <laughs> That's the people of color's chewing gum. You know, juicy fruit. That's good. White folks love it too. But you know the bad chewing gum? That ABC kind, already been chewed. <laughs> Sermons that's already been chewed, they try to give it to you, make you chew it again, but it ain't got enough power of God to raise the dead, it ain't got enough power of God to do anything. That's why the frozen chosen. Icicles on the pew, an iceberg in the pulpit. It's time for the power of the Holy Ghost. It's time for an old awakening and shakening. It's time for something good going on. We get back to the Bible. This message you have today comes from the Bible. It may be on a reading device under my fingers. It may be on a sheet of paper in your lap. But it came from the Bible. It's God's Word. This is where messages ought to come from. It comes from God's Word, the Bible. If you preach current events, that's all you're going to get, current events. You might go out of here with an opinion, but you're not going to go out of here with a blessing. You're not going to go out of here feeling good in your soul. You preach sports, you preach recreation, you preach games. You may get someone on your side who pulls for Carolina or who pulls for Georgia or who pulls for Tennessee. But it's not going to be anything, a hill of beans in the kingdom of God. He's talking about, you don't even know where he is, and yet he has opened my eyes. We know that God heareth not sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. And there again I say, this man had more solid theology. He had just come to Christ and had really not even professed Christ yet. He had been healed, but he had more theology in his belly than many preachers who are ordained have in their heart. And some people say, this poor blind man, he didn't know what he was talking about. He says, God hears not sinners. Well, he knew exactly what he was talking about because that's right. God does not hear you if you're a sinner. The only way he hears you if you have a prayer of repentance and come to God. Amen. People say, well, God answered my prayer and I was in sin and I prayed and God answered it. God had mercy on you. That's what happened. God does not hear you. He cannot hear you if you don't belong to Him. You're not a child of God. You're serving the devil, living for the devil, having what you call a good time with the devil, and then you think you're going to come to God when you're in trouble, and He's going to hear everything you say and do everything you want Him to do. Ain't going to happen. Even a man who was previously blind knew that. Now, there's another blind man that knows it too. But the Bible said that God does not hear sinners. But if you... Do His will. If you worship God, if you know God, you worship Him, and you do His will, He hears you. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? All things that God does are good. Whether it's giving you a postage stamp that you need, or whether it's giving you a miracle to make your legs walk when you're lame. It's all good. But this was a miracle of God. This was a great work. This was a mighty work. And this man said, since the world began, nothing like this has ever been heard. That somebody opened the eyes of one who was born blind. If this man were not a God, he could do nothing. There again, just practical, down to earth, good Christian spiritual hall sense. A lot of people got book sense. A lot of people got university sense. But they ain't got a sense enough to get in the rain, out of the rain when it comes to common sense. Just because Jesus comes into your heart, He don't take all your reasoning out of your head. You still have what is called common sense. This man had good spiritual sense. He had good common sense. 
Because his reasoning is true. If this man were not of God, he could do nothing. There again, now they had conviction. He was telling them the truth, brothers and sisters. I'm telling you, he was telling those Pharisees and religious crowd the truth. They were hearing the truth, but they were so high and thought they were so holy and they were so educated, they could not receive the truth that was coming from some old ex-blind man. No count. So, because you're a certain color, because you're a certain creed, because you're a certain race, because you're from a certain place, because you're of a certain financial status, your word don't mean anything. No, never mind whether you're telling them the truth or not. The determining factor should be the truth, Amen. no matter who speaks it. This man was telling them the truth. If this man, he was talking to Jesus, if this man were not from God, he could not do this. They answered and said unto him, Thou wast altogether born in sins, and dost thou teach us? And they cast him out. They refused to hear the cause of the common people. One of the greatest mistakes that pastors and evangelists, and I'll say even like the Bible says, apostles and the whole thing, teachers, preachers, one of the greatest mistakes that we can make is to shut our eyes and our ears and our heart to the cause of the common man. We can hide ourselves in our accolades and in our towers and in our rooms where they slip you some juice through the hole and try to protect the anointing. You can dazzle yourself in that for a little while, but it ain't going to work. Because your palace is going to be like Nebuchadnezzar. It's going to come down. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob still hears the cause of the common man. Those who have a fire in their soul. Those who love God. Those who still want the Word of God. Those who still want the holiness of God. Those who still are crying out for God. They care about our nation. They care about our country. They care about the cause of Christ. They care about the church. They care about the young people. The common man has the answer. They're not educated enough to bring it out. But it's in their heart. And we do well to hear the calls of the common man. Instead of receiving it, they just got mad and cast him out. They refused to see and believe the truth concerning salvation. They would rather hide in their religiosity, in their pharisaical blindness, than to receive the cause of the common man and to see the truth concerning God's salvation. Verse 35 to 39. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and when he had found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? That's a wonderful question to ask someone. Don't say, Do you like the Baptist? Do you like the Methodist? Do you like the Pentecostal? No matter what you like. Well, it does matter what you like. If you're paying money, you can pay for what you like. But the deal is, is not whether we like the Baptist, not whether we like the Pentecostal, not whether we like the Methodist, not whether we like hot sauce or whether we like cold salad. Or The deal is, do you believe on the Son of God? Amen. When it comes down to heaven and hell, that's what matters. Doesn't matter whether you like mayonnaise like I don't or whether you like mustard like I do. What matters is, do you believe on the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? We're expecting people to believe on someone whom they don't know who he is. We want everybody to believe in Jesus, but they don't know who Jesus is yet. We presented a church, we presented a program, we presented a play, we presented, and that's good. All these things are good in their place. People work very hard to bring these things about. But are we presenting Jesus Christ? Are we presenting a good ministry? Are we presenting a good name? Are we presenting ourselves or are we presenting Jesus Christ? Lord, who is he that I may believe on him? And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, which is a miracle because he couldn't see before and now he can. Thou hast both seen him and it is he that talketh with thee. The message translation said, this is me. Don't you recognize my voice? 
It's what blind people have to depend on. He had been used to listening to the voice. And Jesus said, you're looking at me now. Don't you recognize my voice? And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Do you remember the first time you really ever worshipped God? Do you remember the first time you ever really believed? Oh, glory to God. When God got a hold of your heart and your life... And you worship God. You believe not because just the preacher says so. Not because just the Sunday school teacher says so. Not because just the singer sang. But you believe because it's in your heart. You believe God. Yeah. It's like those people in the Samaritan town. They told that woman, I'm glad you told us that this man has showed you everything that you ever did. This has got to be the Christ, she said. He told me everything that I ever did. Is not this the Christ? And they went out and they heard and they believed. But then they said, Now we believe not because of your word, for we have heard him ourselves. Glory to God makes you want to do a Pentecostal cartwheel. <laughs> Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. Amen. Jesus saved people before the cross, at the cross. And after the cross. Some people think that nobody was saved until the resurrection. Where they got that from? Well, they got it from their kooky head and pharisaical blindness like everything else is wrong with them. That's where they got it from. Abraham was a saved man in the Old Testament. The scripture said he believed God and God put it to his account for righteousness. David was a saved man in the Old Testament. You couldn't be anointed like David was unless you were saved. Oh, they may not say born again like we do. But this man, this man who was previously blind, he believed. What else you got to do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. That's all you can do too, by the way. You cannot do anything else. How can you be healed? You believe. That's all you can do. You can't pay enough money for it. You can't do enough Hail Marys for it. You can't do enough penances for it. All those and Martin Luther and all those, they went through all that. They tried and tried and they found out the truth dawned on them. It's by justification, by faith in Christ alone. That's all you can do to be saved. This man who had just been healed has now just been saved and he believed on him and he worshipped him. And Jesus said, For judgment I am come into this world that they which see not might see and they which see might be made blind. And what in the world is all that about? Well, just simple again, common sense. They who see not might see. Of course, physically, if you don't see, Jesus can make you see. But even spiritually, if you don't see, he can make you see. Those who see not might see, and those who see might be made blind. There are many people who think they see. They think they know. The thought that I thought was a thought, not the thought I thought I thought. I mean, you think that you know, but you don't know like you ought to know. Let a man who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. Those who think they see need to be made blind. That is not physically blindness, but you come to a point where you depend on God. I can't even walk without you holding my hand. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds tomorrow. And whether you sing it in slow time like they were trying to do the other night, or whether you sing it in cut time like they should have ought to have been doing, it don't matter. It's still a good song and it's still a good thing because I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds tomorrow and I know who holds my hand. They refuse to see the truth concerning salvation. And salvation is just as simple as it could be. Salvation was more simple than what Jesus told this man to do. He said, you've got this stuff on your eyes now that I put there. Now you've got to go to the pool of Siloam, which means sent, and you've got to wash. And he did that. He did what God told him to do, and he came back seeing. We want God's blessings, but we don't want to do what God tells us to do. We want God to do everything. 
God has to do everything in the spiritual and the supernatural. But what he tells you to do, you do what he tells you to do, and you don't worry about what Miss Smith's doing. You don't worry about what Miss Johnson's doing. You don't worry about what Bill and Sam is doing. You do what God wants you to do, and if you do what God wants you to do, you won't have time to worry about what they be doing. They refuse to see their sin and admit that they're lost. Verses 40 and 41. Some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words. Jesus talking about they who see not might see and those who see think they see might be made blind. And these Pharisees, they heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? Jesus said unto them, If ye were blind, ye should have no sin. But now you say, We see, therefore your sin remaineth. If you were blind, if you were dependent, you had to have an answer. You were searching. If you were blind, you would not have any sin because you would come to me like this man did and you would allow me to cleanse you of your sin. But now because you say, oh, we see, everything's all right. We got it figured out. We are rich and increased in goods like they lay out and see in church. Everything's going to be all right. We got it all okay. There's even a song about it now. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay I'm okay yeah we're okay we think we're okay no matter how you dress no matter how you look no matter how you live it's okay I'm okay you okay everybody's okay we die and go to hell we'll be okay okay people a lot of okay people in hell you have to have your husband put his knee in your stomach on the bed to put your jeans on don't you have sense enough to know they might be a little bit too tight But I'm okay, I'm okay, everybody's okay. Okay, what about the truth then? What about pharisaical blindness? It's hard to keep people straight when you present yourself in such a way that it's hard to stay straight. I mean, we're still straight. We ain't gay, we straight, but it's hard to say straight, clean straight. It's still holding us to hell. That's what I'm trying to say. Pharisaical blindness says it doesn't matter. And there's even an announcement made. Don't come to my funeral dressed up. Don't come with no suit. Don't come with no tie. Just come just as you are. Well, just as I am meant something else. It didn't mean quite like that. It meant just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. I think that's what that meant. There's so much pharisaical blindness that is leading the church into commercialism and leading the church into secularism and leading the church into coldness, leading the church into indifference, and God is still has the same message today as he had then in John chapter 9. Working the works of God while it is day, and the night comes when no man can work. Pharisaical blindness. There's a woman who is with Jesus now who I respect very dearly, who I never had the opportunity to meet. But she preached for years and years and years and years. I know some of you have a problem when I say she preached. might be a problem to you, but that's all right. Just, you've got uh, Q-tips at home. Just go ahead and clean out. It'll be all right. But she preached for years and years and years. And she preached up even into the 90s. And she finally passed in 94. But one of the big things that she said near the end of her life was darkness is seeming to be overtaking the world and even into the church there's still light jesus is the light of the world and he says we are the light of the world but darkness is settling in when we don't even know what bible to read anymore when we don't even know what the bible says anymore and we have the bible and we have the Manual, and it's all written in there. But it doesn't matter what's written in what if we're not going to live by it and go by it and believe by it and have the same image that it has. It presents an image of holiness, and yet if we present an image of pharisaical blindness, 
And then we wonder why we can't sing, I saw the light. It's because Hank tells many, many, there ain't no light. There ain't no light. Well, all due respect to those who have gone, but I'd like to say, Hank, Bobby, Bill, Joe, there is light. There is light. And His name is Jesus. You have been listening to a sermon from John chapter 9 entitled, Fair Sake Open Blindness. Make sure that Jesus Christ is your Savior and Lord today. This has been a production of Tony Brew Ministries.